Consider the graph of the function y equals the square root of x. What point on this graph is closest to the point 3, 0? What is the closest point? You know lots of points on this function. For example, if you go over to 4, you have the point 4, 2. And so you might consider how far away is 4, 2 from 3, 0. Is it closer than, I don't know, we could go over to the point, for example, 1, 1. How, how far away is 1, 1 from, from this function? Or, or you might go to the point 0, 0. How far away is 0, 0 from the point 3, 0? So, so which of these points, and there's infinitely more of all the points on the line, uh, all the points on the graph of y equals square root of x, which one is closest to the point 3, 0? This is an optimization problem. It's asking us to minimize something. In particular, we're trying to minimize distance. To find the closest point, we want to minimize the distance. And so let's give some names to things. Let's pick an arbitrary point on this graph. Say some point x, y. Then we can describe the distance, I'll call it d, between x, y, and 3, 0 is just given by the formula, the difference between the x values, x minus 3 squared, plus the difference between the y values, y minus 0, which is just y squared. This just comes from Pythagoras' theorem. After all, here you just have a triangle, a right triangle where the bottom leg is just the difference between the x values, x minus 3, and the top, the longer leg is the difference between the y values, y minus 0. It doesn't matter if you do 3 minus x or x minus 3 because you're going to be squaring it anyway. Okay, great. So we want to minimize this function. But again, we run into a problem. Notice this is a function of two variables. Right now your d is, is a function of both x and y. It's a function of both x and y. And so to find the derivative, I first need to make it a function of one variable. And so I need some kind of constraint. What's constraining the values of x and y? Well, we said that point x, y has to be on this graph. It can't just be some random point out in the universe. So in particular, it must satisfy this relationship that y equals the square root of x. Hence, we could rewrite this as just a function of x because y squared would be x since y is the square root of x. Hence, your function of x is just the square root of x minus 3 squared plus x. Here's a function that we want to minimize, and we know what to do to minimize it. To find the minimum, we'll take the derivative We'll set the derivative equal to zero, and then we'll double check that really is a minimum and not a maximum. Okay, let's do it. But wait, as I start thinking about what's about to happen, I realize taking the derivative is going to start getting a little bit messy. After all, whenever I have a square root involved, the derivative of that is going to be a little bit gross. So I'm going to make a modification. Instead of thinking about this function, I'm instead going to think about the function big D of x, I'll call it, which is just x minus 3 squared plus x. Now, it's not the same function. It's just the inside of the square root. But notice, whenever little d has a minimum, so does big D. A square root is at its smallest value when the value you're putting inside is smallest. So instead of trying to minimize this little d function of the square root, I can instead just minimize the inside of it. I can ask, when is the inside at a minimum? And that'll give me the same solution. Okay, here we go now. The derivative of big D comes out to just be 2 times x minus 3, and then by the chain rule, times 1, plus 1. So that's just 2x minus 6 plus 1, so 2x minus 5. To find the critical values, we'll set that equal to 0, and we see that's 0 when x is at 2.5. So here I'm at this special value, 
2.5, which would be somewhere, somewhere around here. X is 2.5, Y is just the square root of 2.5, whatever that happens to be. Now, how do we know that's a minimum and not, say, some kind of maximum? Well, it seems kind of obvious that it's not going to be a maximum, right? Moving further away, you would expect the values to be getting bigger and bigger. Right? As you move further and further away, the value is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But we can verify this really quickly by just thinking here at the x value of 2.5, my derivative came out to be 0. If I plug in something a little bit bigger than 2.5, say I plug in something like 3, you plug that into your derivative, notice it's a negative value, so it's decreasing afterwards. And if I plug in something smaller than, smaller than 2.5, so I plug in something like, oh, I'm sorry, if I plug in 3, this is 6 minus 5, that's 1, that's a positive value. So it's, it's, it's increasing afterwards, it's increasing afterwards. And if I plug in something smaller than 2.5, like I plug in 2, then I get 4 minus 5, now it's negative. So sure enough, the function would have been decreasing, the distance function would have been decreasing, and then increasing, because the derivative went from negative to positive, which tells me that I have a minimum here at x equals 2.5. So the point 2.5, square root of 2.5, is the closest point on the graph to the point 3, 0. Now this just seems like an abstract problem, but it's actually quite useful. You might imagine that, that this graph represents something like the trajectory of an asteroid. And you want to know at what point will the asteroid be closest to the Earth. And so all the time, all the time problems like this come up in engineering and in physics, and, and they can be of particular value and interest to being able to solve the, the closest point on some trajectory to some other given point.